This presentation is going to cover six of the most common edible weeds in Alabama fields. Critical to note that these plants have lookalikes. Properly identify all wild plants before consumption using a field guide or with expert advice. You want to be 100% sure of the plant's identity. Additionally, know whether any of the plants you're harvesting may have been sprayed with chemicals. You don't want to harvest and eat any plant within the pre-harvest interval of a chemical that has been sprayed on it. Finally, while some of the plants we'll be covering do have niche commercial markets, avoid planting invasive and aggressive weeds outside of their native habitat and letting them go to seed. First up, shiso, also called beefsteak plant. Plant occurs across the state, commonly in partially wooded locations such as forest edges. Some know it for being toxic to cattle, which will browse it typically only when the rest of the pasture is overgrazed, and it can be a serious concern in those instances. It's also widely consumed in Asia and other parts of the world for human food and even has some niche market demand, especially in upscale farm-to-table restaurants and those that focus on uh, different types of Asian dishes. Shiso is a mint family herb that can come in purple and also green. Possible to confuse shiso with other mint family plants such as basil, nettles, or mint itself. There's a long history of culinary use, both raw, steamed, pickled, or as a garnish. Shiso is unfamiliar to many Americans, but it is a common herb in Japanese cooking. Note the square stem, purple midveins, and opposite ovate leaves. Amaranth is another plant that is widely consumed across the globe, but in the U.S. it's mostly known as an aggressive weed, also called pigweed. It appears in vegetable fields and overgrazed cattle pastures. We should note that amaranth thrives in high nitrogen agricultural fields and can accumulate those nitrates to undesirable levels for human health. Other greens, such as those in the brassica family, can also accumulate oxalates and nitrates. The safest approach is to consume amaranth that is not growing in a heavily fertilized location and to boil it to lower the nitrate and oxalate levels before consumption. Amaranth occurs statewide in Alabama. There are many native species of amaranth here, as well as some non-native. It's widely known as pigweed. These are the flowers of smooth pigweed, Amaranthus hybridus. We have Powell's amaranth, which is Amaranthus powelli. Amaranth loves disturbed areas such as tilled fields. Note the slightly wavy leaf margins. Identifying between amaranth species can be difficult. Pictured here is red root pigweed, Amaranthus retroflexus. There are traditional culinary uses for amaranth on multiple continents, especially in areas such as India, West Africa, and in Native American cultures. It's best to harvest these for cooking when the greens are young and they're still tender. It actually is possible to buy seed of some amaranth species to grow them as a summer green. The green sold under the name Callaloo is an amaranth species. Remember though that amaranth easily becomes a weed, so only plant it if there's no way you'll let it go to seed and then enter the seed bank for future generations. Many amaranth species can be grown here and harvested as summer greens, which can be helpful when other greens like lettuce and the brassicas struggle in the summer heat. There's not much commercial market for amaranth greens in Alabama, however. Many people will be familiar with spiny pigweed, which is very difficult to pull out with your bare hands because of the sharp spines. It can technically be consumed, however, as a very young plant before those spines develop. As the plant matures, it becomes very difficult to grab and irritating to the skin. This is definitely not a weed you want in your field. The amaranth on the right of the screen is at an ideal stage for cooking when it's young and tender. Once the plant gets larger and starts to flower, its flavor is not quite as good. Purslane is a familiar weed with an interesting citrus flavor. 
Bruce Lane is a warm season annual occurring across the state. It has the texture of a succulent and small yellow flowers. Bruce Lane is often found in tilled fields and even in sidewalk cracks. It grows out horizontally, remaining close to the ground. Try chopping it and using it as one component in a salad raw for its tangy, citrusy punch. This is another plant with reported toxicity to livestock, especially when they have access to it and not much other forage. This is another weed species where you can actually buy seeds of it. You can purchase purslane seeds specifically to grow as a salad green. Of course, you don't want to get to the stage of letting it flower and then becoming a problematic annual weed in subsequent years. Lamb's Quarters is a spinach relative that occurs statewide. This annual plant likely came from Europe, though there are native species in the Kenoponium genus here. They are sometimes referred to as goosefoot. Lamb's Quarters has alternate, simple, diamond, or triangular shaped leaves. It is found in vegetable fields and other disturbed sites. It can be used like spinach as a green. The seeds are also edible. This is a close relative of the grain quinoa. It takes quite a bit of work to prepare it for the seeds though on a home scale since you need to remove the saponins in the seed coat. Pictured here is flowering lamb's quarters in a vegetable field. Don't let it get to this stage. Like pigweed, this is an aggressive weed you don't want to in intentionally introduce into a vegetable operation. Dandelion is probably the most familiar of all of these plants. Dandelion is a perennial plant often found in lawns or in orchard floors across Alabama, though it's more common in the northern half of the state. It's known, of course, for its recognizable seed heads that have white hairs which aid the seed in wind dispersal. The leaves have sharply triangular lobes but can vary in shape. Dandelion has the most commercial potential of any of these plants. You can buy cultivated dandelion seeds. There are cultivar names like Cleo, which is actually a hybrid, and Felix. Dandelion is very much a crop and can be found in stores and on menus across the U.S. In addition to their distinguishing yellow flower and puffball and fluorescence, dandelion plants have a noticeable milky sap when you cut into the stalk. There are some lookalikes. Carolina false dandelion is a native annual occurring in similar habitats to dandelion. It's not toxic, but it's not as tasty. Leaves are a little less lobed and can have branch stems, unlike dandelion. Wild lettuce is another dandelion lookalike. There are several species of wild lettuce. They're biennials with a basil rosette and also have a milky white latex sap. Prickly lettuce, Lactuca seriola, is a non-native commonly found across Alabama. It's not particularly good to eat because of the spines and it's bitter. Canadian wild lettuce, however, Lactuca canadensis, tastes like lettuce. It's, it's a good uh, sweet green that you can eat when it comes back up in the spring and it's native. With wild lettuce, the midrib is triangular. The dandelion midrib is oval. Wild lettuce has hairs along the midrib, which are usually evident, and the leaf shape can vary. Sow thistle is a non-native aster family plant introduced worldwide. It's found throughout the state as well. It has stems up to three feet tall, and they have a milky sap. Final edible weed is chickweed. Common chickweed is native to Europe, and it occurs statewide in Alabama as a cool season annual weed. There are other species of chickweed in the state as well. Tennessee chickweed is found in North Alabama, and giant chickweed is found in North and Central Alabama. Giant chickweed is also called star chickweed. It's found in forests. Unlike common chickweed, Giant chickweed is actually a perennial. Common chickweed is what you are most likely to encounter, especially in agricultural fields, and the species that's most known as edible. 
It's a fairly common garden weed that will tolerate some shade. It has opposite leaves and small white flowers with five petals that almost appear to be ten petals because they are so deeply divided. Enjoy chickweed raw and salads.